from the Prelude, Book 12 of the 1850 version, introducing the theme of the spots of time. There are in our existence spots of time that with distinct preeminence retain a renovating virtue. When depressed by false opinion and contentious thought, or aught of heavier or more deadly weight, in trivial occupations and the round of ordinary intercourse, our minds are nourished and invisibly repaired. A virtue by which pleasure is enhanced, that penetrates, enables us to mount when high, more high, and lifts us up when fallen. This efficacious spirit chiefly lurks among those passages of life that give profoundest knowledge to what point and how the mind is lord and master. Outward sense the obedient servant of her will. Such moments are scattered everywhere, taking their date from our first childhood. I remember well that once, while yet my inexperienced hand could scarcely hold a bridle, with proud hopes I mounted and we journeyed toward the hills. An ancient servant of my father's house was with me, my encourager and guide. We had not travelled long, ere some mischance disjoined me from my comrade, and through fear dismounting down the rough and stony moor I led my horse, and stumbling on, at length came to a bottom where in former times a murderer had been hung in iron chains. The gibbet mast had mouldered down, the bones and iron case were gone, but on the turf hard by, soon after that fell deed was wrought, some unknown hand had carved the murderer's name. The monumental letters were inscribed in times long past, but still from year to year, by superstition of the neighbourhood, the grass is cleared away, and to this hour the characters are fresh and visible. A casual glance had shown them, and I fled, faltering and faint and ignorant of the road. Then, reascending the bare common, saw a naked pool that lay beneath the hills, the beacon on the summit, and more near a girl who bore a pitcher on her head, and seemed with difficult steps to force her way against the blowing wind. It was in truth an ordinary sight, but I should need colours and words that are unknown to man to paint the visionary dreariness which, while I looked all round for my lost guide, invested moorland waste and naked pool. The beacon crowning the lone eminence, the female and her garments vexed and tossed by the strong wind.